So I will be covering the institutional capture of Indian institutions by gender ideology. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is queer cells in colleges and how these student communities have sort of led to advocating for administrative decisions like a gender neutral space. And what happened in TIS was that uh, the ground floor of an existing girls hostel was changed to accommodate gender non-conforming students. That is, they're going to also be admitting men what in what was once known as a female-only space. And another, another issue with this is that the syllabus is also facing some changes. And the TIS, uh, TIS Masters in Women's Studies, although they'd make a distinction between women and gender in their syllabus outline, the last semester is offering electives that say gender and media culture, queering feminism, gender ideology, and education. And to be on the safer side, we should just assume the worst. And moving on to gender neutral housing that is also coming up in UOH. So in this case, what happened was there was a trans identified male called Aruvi who was waiting in a women's hostel for his friend, I suppose, and he was asked to leave by the security or the warden, saying that this was a women's hostel. And he wrote about how he felt humiliated and how he's enraged and how he, or like, you know, uh, transgender or gender non-conforming students should also get their own space. And uh, the issue with UOH is they often cast bait and exploit Vemula's memory to suit their narrative, which is something that we're definitely uh, up against. The issue is that it's a sex segregation is not a caste issue. It's a women's safety issue. And for them to like, you know, manipulate the, these narratives to just straw man our arguments is very wrong. And moving on to Ashoka's gender neutral spaces. So this is where a bathroom, uh, the female and male bathroom signs were removed and a gender neutral sign was placed to be inclusive of everybody and anybody going inside. But I will also mention that Ashoka is a very elite institution. I think this, this does become a matter of concern when it trickles down to public spaces. And, you know, for all we know, it does start at an institutional level. And... The next will be Ashoka's Instagram handle. So recently I learned about something called pronoun privilege that is going around. And it's apparently not just disrespectful to or like misgender someone or whatever, but also oppressive. So this is a way of guilting people into going along with what they believe in. And for anybody who's been in first year or second year of the, the college, you know, you try to go on with whatever group think that's there so that, you know, you feel included. And I do feel this is like very manipulative and very like, you know, not, not allowing space for new thought as such, like, you know, to challenge this. And this is another issue that I uh, want to bring up, how there are uh, funds being raised for uh, people who want to go undergo gender reassignment surgery i think these funds are being raised by you know conducting quizzes and a recent quiz is, was uh, hosted by uh, nadika najja a trans identified male who calls himself a lesbian i just wanted to point out that such a twisted person is engaging with you know impressionable minds in college and this is very disturbing they're glorifying transition here they're saying that life is easier and more comfortable when individuals undergo transition. I just want to bring to light that I don't know what about, you know, mutilating your genitals and taking a lot of hormones will make life any easier or more comfortable. The next is they are debunking some myths about gender dysphoria where they are ignoring the link between body dysmorphia and gender dysphoria when there is a link between the two. The, a lot of uh, girls who grow up do experience uh, body dysmorphia and are very prone to like, you know, eating disorders. And there has been 
proof that a lot of people who are identifying as trans now do have a lot of these eating disorders and other issues self image and body related issues and moving on from that i want to talk about how jamia square collective is promoting gender ideology through social media and how there is this one session that was called demystifying queer mental health that was held so my issue with this is is that feminism has become such a consumerist philosophy online like you know with this he for she going on and wanting to be inclusive of everyone and everything when it really shouldn't be feminism is exclusively for women and there shouldn't be any room for men who identify as queer or different or whatever and this person this girl deeksha bala is like you know part of the postmodern school of feminism and is queer affirmative and what not this is being inter- introduced in academic spaces this is a big issue and moving on from that i want to talk about the importance of girls colleges i am a beneficiary of a of like you know a girls college i did my undergrad in a women's college and i see like women from all walks of life coming there like women from very conservative families especially like you know they wouldn't have gotten to study unless like you know there was a girls institute their parents were only okay with putting them in college because there was a girls institute and historically women's colleges in india were set up to further women's education to get them to leave the kitchen and leave their homes and get an education and you know it is a safe space that is being created i do see girls who are more confident more expressive of themselves than i would in a co-ed educational space and you know our body language is uh, shifts when we're like you know in a female only space like you know we're not always slouching we're not always you know stuttering or hesitating to say what we want to say and you know it's very important that you know girls have their own space women's college rejects admission of trans women so this was a case in kerala where the where the women's college questioned high court orders that said they had to reserve seats for trans women they argued that it would change the nature of the college and that the college is a minority institution that has its right to admit students that they want main, fiercely maintaining that a women's college is a female only space Delhi University DU is also not admitting trans women to the to its women's only colleges and they specifically said that the lack of infrastructure in terms of unisex washroom will led to this policy decision acknowledging that uh, like it could uh, become a safety issue to admit trans identified males into women's colleges this trans identified male manabi bando pa the has made headlines for being the first transgender college principal of a girls college in west bengal and this is being hailed as something very progressive and great when it really isn't it's actually a mockery to women that you know a, a man is sort of better suited to head head a women's only college uh, dil se open is uh, access bank's new initiative um i assuming mr harish ayer had a lot to do with it first i will go ahead with giving a little background on mr harish he is an lgbtq rights activist who's gobbled up gender ideology and is really pushing it in on all his media accounts like even if you see his twitter pronouns it says he slash slash she i don't know what that's supposed to mean and he's recently joined congress and he's really known for his media advocacy and his engagement with a lot of bollywood celebrities so we're talking about someone who does believe in the trans agenda in politics having a major media presence and policy level influence in a bank so some of these inclusive inclusive initiatives include employees are allowed to dress in any thing they want and 
another one is that the bathrooms the restrooms have been open to all genders that is men and women will not have sex segregated spaces and another one was mx can be had added as a title instead of miss or mister considering that you know they have to be inclusive of non binary people and this is appears very contradictory contradictory to the other set of policies that they're introducing that is they're saying access uh, the access bank is saying that they can make same sex partners a nominee and can open joint accounts with same sex partners but they still somehow manage to include this gender gender expression nonsense and moving on i wanted to talk a little about alok menon he is an indian american tra trans rights activist as ma covered he is i think he is known for his like bad poetry and absurd fashion choices and he is also very influential in indian academia to a certain extent i would say where he posts his views on white feminism and i would say this is race baiting and i would like to add that there are oppressive structures in the global south that have very little to do with colonialism like sati for example that is the burning of widows and so this form of race baiting sort of obscures conversations that need to be had about oppressive structures in the global south and another one of his posts was where he was defaming raymond saying that turf ideas have somehow mainstreamed when turf ideas are clearly not mainstream saying that she argued that trans women were men colonizing women's spaces which is true by the way and somehow trying to insinuate that there are, uh, the turfs and the right wing are working towards bringing uh like gender right uh, gender activists down when it's really not the case so the issue with indian academia is they've sort of gobbled his nonsense up and now they are spewing it in different ways by like creating a link between uh trans uh, activism and caste and how that is often like used to straw man arguments that you know uh, like gender critical people like you know put forth every but any gender critical person is always called uh, called a savarna bigot or something along those lines if they disagree with the fact that like you know uh, like trans identified males should shouldn't be admitted to women only spaces 